they don't have the same curve. It's How are we doing folks? How's things? Uh, I've got three jobs on today. We're going to be looking at the dog leg. When we got the door fitted, we figured out that there was a bit of an alignment issue with that. And uh, it turned out not just to be with the way it was fitted, but with the contour on it. So we're going to go and uh, sort that one out. We're also going to be looking at fitting a aftermarket battery tray. And then right up in the corner over here, you're going to see that we're going to be uh, taking out some of the solder where it was cracking, reinforcing the welding there and refilling it back in again. So let's get cracking. Okay, folks, I decided to do a quick video on the door installation. Now, I uh, went off and painted in behind the hinges on both sides uh, just so that when I get this all lined up, uh, the paint is going to be in there as well as outside. So now I'm just kind of working on lining it all up. Um, I have to get the edge right that way. There's a bit of a rotation that way, and then there's a little bit of work here as well. So there's a lot of uh, axes to kind of work on. So I basically propped up two corners down either side here to try and give it some sort of gap control down here and I can use the jack to kind of pop up each side uh, before I jack it down. So I think I'm at the stage where we're going to tighten it but uh, I discovered something which is uh, going to involve a little bit more work which is here. So I have this fairly well balanced. It's a tiny little bit high there so I'm kind of guessing that with the weight of the door comes on that's going to go down which also mean the weight of that is going to go down. Now this is a 280Z original door, and this is one of those aftermarket kind of uh, dog legs that I put in before. Now I aligned that up by using the curvature here, marking it up the previous one, but it's probably not advisable to try and go ahead and do this while you don't have a door to line it up with. So not only are they offline with each other, which will be worse in a second, but they'll also, uh, they don't have the same curve. This one has a more relaxed kind of lazy curve where this one's kind of more sharp and abrupt and gives it more of an edge. So uh, not what I wanted to see. So I'm gonna lock it down now. And then uh, when the door relaxes it to its normal place, we'll have a look to see what we can do to uh, adjust that. Okay, don't mind the noise in the background. It's a lovely wet airplane today here. So, we have a fairly close alignment there. It's a little bit high, so we'll push down, that will relax down, okay? And then all the way around here, it's good. If you look at the top here, it's fairly flush. And likewise at the bottom. But, here's that disaster. Okay, so I talked about doing a couple of different things here. One was to uh, replace the dog leg, but to be honest, Put a new dog leg on there, so it won't be the same effect. So what I'm gonna have to try and do now is trying to make this relax a little bit more like that. So it's an experiment. Gives it look a little bit of a backtracking on this now, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a cut across here and tap that fella down and see what it kind of relax down and kind of line up here. The reality there'll probably be a bit of a whoop up here at the end, but you're not really gonna see it unless you get right down on it. It's actually probably gonna look uh, like it's just naturally contouring in there. I can see that the door has kind of got a tiny little taper off here. So I'm just going to try and see if I can get a happy ground between the two of them. But other than that, the gaps are pretty good all the way around. I can't complain. It does widen up a tiniest little bit there. So I don't know if I'm ever going to get that out of it. Just the tiniest little bit. So this is either going to be a big disaster or a big success. I really don't know, so I think it's just covered. That's something we can do. Okay, so you can see not only has it gone down, but it's kind of gone in. Which I don't mind. I'm going to be kind of using uh, this face here to kind of create that edge here. See how we line up. Definitely getting closer, all right, but I think we can go further. Let's give you a little run down along the line up there. See, it's definitely getting closer to where we want. There's a little bit of a edge kind of protruding there, so 
You can get her to go down a little bit further and then we'll just kind of weld them, fill up that area and kind of uh, try and contour it nicely. Should be okay. I think by doing it this way actually it's going to be good because by welding here and grinding that in, we're going to kind of get a relaxed edge here like that. So uh, hopefully this works. We'll uh, cut it a little bit more and tap it down a little bit more. Okay. Looks a little nasty, but it's actually okay. I hope. Okay, so we have uh, maintained this flat edge here with the flatness of this part here. And then we try to bring this curve as gradual in here as possible. If you look down along the line of it, it looks fairly good. And the other way looks fairly good. So what we're doing now is we're going to fill in this here and we're going to use that kind of contour. We're going to keep that as our, our edge and we're just going to build it up in here. There might be a little bit of filler then on just the tip of the well here just to kind of keep it all planed off. The one thing I want to make sure is that this does not buckle out here because that'd look horrible. So I will work on trying to get that as straight as possible before we do any welding means it'll probably get pushed in just ever so slightly there. So uh, time to weld. Now unfortunately my welder is getting worse. I remember mentioning a few weeks ago about where it was kind of sticking and bouncing when I was doing the uh, deferential, doing that big weld. And it seems to be getting worse, so I don't know. I think it's uh, either on its way out or it needs a big repair. And it's cash I don't really have. I'll probably be putting into uh, this if I can. But um. I think we'll just slowly build up the weld. Won't be the best looking weld you'll get, but uh, it'll definitely uh, look a lot better when it's uh, all rounded off with the, uh, the mop and disc. Okay, so I uh, put a flat edge here just to keep that all kind of in to uh, kind of one constant plane here and have to tap it in there just to convince it to keep it straight. I'm going to put on some welds. Probably lose uh, my patience several times because of this welder with the hidden lately. But we are well done. Okay, there's the adjusted line. You can see that the line is coming just down there. So let's close the door and see how we look. It's looking a little better, all right. Let's get her in flush. Okay, so if you look up here now, we find that our curve is much more relaxed. And now that I'm in charge of the edge here with the welder, we can round that off a little bit more than the way it was. What I might do then is I could go crazy now and try and just fill this all in with steel uh, but to be honest we're only just going to be adding more heat onto the panel which is uh, always a little bit dodgy especially with the amount I've just done with it. So what I might do is I might just come across now with just a tiny little skim just to fill in all these indents here and uh, start sending that out. But it actually stayed because we're kind of dealing with two uh, sorry one solid edge here the weld when it gets connected to it it doesn't get a chance to warp out of shape now at all so when i feel that there it actually feels fairly flat uh which means it's going to continue on with that nice plane there so uh i think that's a success um i think what we're gonna do now is get the filler on that now just i'm just crap with filling i can never get my head around it uh but i'll come in and just get that lined up here just have it a little bit better a couple of small high spots there i might grind them back flat first uh and then give the whole, uh, whole area a nice little scrub down. And I've rubbed a bit of filler. When I say rubbed, I mean like fucking smashed a bit of filler onto this here. Um, so we'll let that set now. We'll get the uh, sandpaper in there. We'll flatten it all out and see how we look. But uh, it's a big, big improvement on what it was. And I think that little contour, that little kick up you're going to see with it going up here 
won't be that visible. Also, I'm going to black decal all the way down on the side of this, which is kind of take a bit of emphasis off it as well. But I'm actually um, going to get the video back in here later when uh, when the car is painted, just to see how visible this is, to see if this is a, an effective way of dealing with uh, the slight differences between um, the uh, genuine and the aftermarket parts. So uh, but, uh, we'll have to wait and see how we get on. Okay, and there's a lot of noise going on here when you're looking at everything. Um, just between the different layers of paint, steel, contours, shapes, curves. But I have that all shaved back. And we'll just see now how it matches up. So I have a lot better than it was. Okay, it follows all the curves. If that gets pushed in just about there. You can see that's fairly spot on. All the way around. And once again, you don't even notice the ch change in angle here. Because uh, I have it all blended in from being around here, around here. It kind of goes back to a sharper point. So it's almost like it's part of the, uh, the detail. So uh, I'm very happy with that. Okay. As I'm going through Snagless in the car, I remember coming across this on all four corners. It was visible from day one. But uh, when we took it back down to the steel, you could see uh, that there were solder joints here and uh, that there's cracks forming across it. Now, this old solder, as far as my research shows, is that it's just a filler. Uh, but the joint does be soldered as well, but it's just kind of a filler over it. Now, the fact that they're cracking basically means that the solder is stressed at that point and it's kind of given away. So I was chatting to the guy who's going to be doing the painting for me and he says that it's best um, Weld at that point. If there's a kind of a, a structure give right there, um, if you fill it in, you're going to just uh, have it come back again. So we're going to look at taking that back down, put a couple of tacks on that area just to strengthen it up, and then we'll fill over the whole lot again. So step one, let's take her back. So as you can see here, this is the uh, overlap of the two steels and right where you had an awful lot of uh, solder in the depth there, uh, that's where it cracked. So we're going to look at putting in a couple of tacks along these points here. Now, you know that that steel there and there, right where the crack was, is fully clamped together and it's all below the level of the solder. So I just have to do a bit of research here now and confirm that uh, putting filler over solder like this is okay. If not, I'll have to uh, learn a new skill. Comes to show you never know what's underneath, so up there and you can see that there is damage underneath here it's like a little opening on the uh, steel where it was joined and uh, it needs a little bit of help I don't know is it corrosion comes from the far side the welder will figure that out very shortly but it looks like actually there was some sort of repairs done here during manufacturing and uh, because that's not fully joined there the give was actually showing its face on the solder so I'm gonna go across with the welder now and just see if that solves that issue And once again, up in the front right hand corner, you can see that the uh, solder is hiding a lot of shitty wells in there, to be honest. So, uh, we are going to get a nice bit of strength there and that should hold any kind of flexing and stopping the solder from cracking there. So these are filled in. I'm uh, going to have to let them dry for a little while and see how we get on. Um, so the solder that was here was probably a three or four mil deep right into the crevice. Now I know it's not a good idea to put on a thick load of Bondo uh, because it can peel off. But as far as my take in on take is on it is that if you have it on like a panel here and you've got a big patch, it's basically easy to just vibrate and pop out because it's this big chunk 
that the expanding and shrinking at different rates than the steel that it's on. But right, these joints here, uh, these are rock solid, probably one of the stiffer, stiffest points on the whole car. And the fact that it's completely surrounded, it's like a little well of filler in there, I don't think it's going to be too much of an issue. Uh, but I stand corrected if so be. Uh, likewise with these, very happy. So we have to just let this uh, settle for a while. You can see my skills of getting this right in one go is not that straight, but uh, look, we have to start somewhere. And then into this corner here. So I'll let this set and come back and we'll sand it and uh, we'll see how it looks. So I've dropped in the uh, battery tray and you can see that it actually is quite tasty. It just sits in there nice and snug by itself and follows the natural contours of the line. So I just need to uh, work out how I'm going to get this in here without upsetting my uh, current paintwork all that much. Uh, the nice thing is that the battery where it sits there now, and the battery sits above that, my uh, little cover plate that I put in before would be mostly covered, so it's going to actually, uh, I suppose in a sense, conceal the uh, left to right um, transformation of the car. So uh, let's go and see what way we are going to uh, weld this in. So I put the battery back in after giving it a quick prime and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to mark out these two holes. Uh, just to kind of rewind back to actually what I'm planning with this. Um, I'm not going to weld this in place. Uh, there's nice paintwork underneath this. There's also cabling that comes under here. And because I'm doing quite a custom job with the wire and loom, having everything in the back here, I won't mind actually repeating access in this way. So I'm going to actually bolt the battery tray in. I'll probably kind of put on some sort of a rubber gasket on underneath this so when it's bolted it's just uh, kind of nicely sealed. It's not going to be metal on metal for any kind of movement and possibly exposing in some rust down on the down on the line. So I'm going to first of all do these two holes, bolt it in, then do them two, bolt that in, and then do the two from the outside here. Uh, should be plenty. The strange the tray is nice quality, but it kind of gives this hole here as if it's going to give that clamp over the battery. But there's no um, space uh, because it's actually up against that plate there, so I'm not too sure what's the story behind the design of that, but uh, I'll figure some other way around. When I have it bolted in, it might piss you. might weld a little tab here just so I can hook up above. I'll worry about that after. But for now, I want to kind of just get it in. When that battery tray is in then, I can actually give this a whole lot of clean out and maybe another spray in here. I have to try and do this whole front end. And then I can actually start getting things into the engine bay here and getting this um, motor along a bit more progressive than it is at the moment. So I've just uh, jacked these in with two uh, MA bolts and that's kind of locked it in nice and tight there. So now I'm going to use this, now that's all pulled in, sorry, no, pulled in that way. I'm going to mark out these two holes here and then the two down there. That'll be six uh, M8 bolts holding that in. And it'll be sitting down nice and tight onto that plate, so uh, I don't think it's going anywhere. So we'll get the other ones marked out now and uh, get it drilled out. Folks, got two bolts on the inside, two bolts on the outside, and two bolts towards the front. Obviously, these are just bolts to help me locate it as it is. So we've got them marked here, here, and here. So we get nice stainless bolts, good washers, get them all flushed in, nice and tight. Uh, no fear of corrosion at that point. Um, and then we'll put a little bit of seal underneath the washers to make sure that nothing's kind of getting in down behind this. Uh, we'll probably put this in painted and uh, then we can uh, tighten it in and then if we want to paint on top of that again we can but at least it's in fixed. Okay folks I painted the uh, battery tray I gave it a good old heavy uh, coat uh, ran a little bit but I don't even care about this because it's going to be under the battery. I've kind of gone around and put little black dots marking the perimeters of where each of these uh, plates like here, we're gonna make up with the other side. That way there's just like a nice uh, layer of, um, we can put in a nice layer of uh, seam sealer on this. That way if there's anything kind of trying to drip down there, it can't 
So I'm going to go and apply the sim sealer right at these points now and then we're going to see about uh, putting it in permanently. Okay, I got the sealer put on the inside of all of these surfaces here. That basically means wherever there's contact down around here that the metal is going to be hitting metal and kind of causing the paint to chip. So I'm going to try and marry these up fairly cleanly. Be fairly close at that. And then I can press all that sealant in after the fact. So now I need to try and get six bolts on a bike holiday Saturday and seal them all in. Not too bad. Okay, I took out each of those bolts and chopped them back so that they're not sticking out a mile. And now we're gonna go and tighten it in. So that's it put in, and we're tightened down and sealed up. Now, I suppose it's a little bit of a mishap there in the sense that I could have sealed, uh, sealed all down the back, but I might actually just put a layer of sealer over it, and then when it gets painted, it'll all get joined in together. Looking underneath then, we have uh, put on the sealant. Uh, this is all hidden inside here, so I'm not too worried about how it looks. I uh, did see a kind of strange thing where you can see actually the uh, under seal seem to be softening when this stuff is put on so maybe it's just whatever chemicals it is just setting it off again so we'll keep an eye on that and uh, we'll be putting under seal over all of this over all of this here as well so it doesn't look too bad it's very solid anyway that's the main thing another thing to know is the clamp holes that come up over the battery the way this design is done is the clamp hole is tight to the bodywork so um i might put on a little hole through the whole lot and seal it and put on a little kind of a frame that comes up here that allows us to bring it up and over the battery but uh, not too bad all right folks that wraps it up for this week uh we're just going to finalize getting the bodywork painted now the few little areas we found a little bit more rust that we're just uh, getting mopped up and then we're off to the paint shop happy days so while that's in getting painted we're going to turn our attention to the engine and finalizing the few little modifications to the gearbox down there and getting that ready so we can actually plant it into the car and start the big reassembly i cannot wait to get into this man and as always guys, any likes or subscribes, I'd really appreciate that. We'll talk to you guys soon. Take care. Salam.